Next, 18 years after the original incident, another UFO investigator would try to lift the veil of secrecy surrounding this mysterious encounter. Betty Cash and Vicki Landrum have been ridiculed and ignored since their alleged 1980 encounter with an aircraft. But the UFO community refused to let the case die. John Schuessler is an aerospace engineer and deputy director of the Mutual UFO Network. MUFON, as it's called, is a worldwide organization of UFO believers who study and investigate sightings. The women contacted him several weeks after the incident. Schuessler was curious, but skeptical, until he met Betty Cash. She took her wig off, and she had big patches of hair missing from her head. And that was so shocking, and I, I said to her, I said, look, something very serious happened to you. And if you're openly honest with me and give me the information I'm looking for, I'll stick with you to the very end. I said, I need to talk to the other people that were involved in this case. And so I called Vicki Landrum, and I talked to her and her grandson, Colby. We asked them, why did you just go home uh, after this incident happened? And they said, well, you've got to understand what happened. They were what you might say, healthy Texas stock people. When something happens, they tough it out. They don't just run for help. Mrs. Landrum said, we always tough it out. I never go to the doctor. I never go to the hospital. I don't take medicine. When I'm ill, I tough it out. And so that's kind of what happened in this case. Convinced of their story, Schusler agreed to look for answers. Then we went out to the site where this happened. They had never been back. We took them out one at a time. They, they each one took us right to the very place, even though they'd never been back from that night because they'd been too ill. And we walked through the scenario and we timed it and we understood what happened. And we looked at the roadway that was burned and the trees that were burned. And uh, we saw the emotions in these people when they got back to the place. They just broke down, completely broke down, cried. And they were so frightened from it, they still didn't want to be there. And uh, after that, we decided, well, we'll let them go home, and then we'll start walking the roadways. Schusler began to canvass the area for witnesses to the incident. His investigation revealed that a Dayton police officer and his wife saw military helicopters in the sky on the night of December 29, 1980. He had other witnesses, too, civilian witnesses, that weren't as alert about what helicopters are, but they could describe them with two rotors on them that made them very unique. And there was no one else but the military flew twin rotor helicopters in 1980. We started asking for those kind of records from the military. Uh, we were just completely stonewalled just like these people didn't exist and the information didn't exist. And so that started our quest for more information and a long, long drawn out investigation. Through the Freedom of Information Act, in 1982, Schusler obtained what he feels is the smoking gun in the case, the official military report on the investigation into the women's claims, which called their story credible. With Schusler's aid, the two women hired a lawyer. To me, it seemed to be a a truthful story. Uh, yes, I've had people who try to, as the saying goes, strap a story on you. I don't believe they were doing that. And the evidence uh, contradicted that too. Nearly six years after the alleged incident, Betty Cash and Vicki Landrum believed they might finally get some relief. They filed suit with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Houston, and a preliminary hearing was set for August 1986. Of course, the federal government denied they had any connection with anything like this. And uh, we didn't have any way of proving that the federal government was involved. All we could prove is that women were injured. Who injured them? We couldn't prove it. And so the judge says, I'm dismissing the case.